Today's title is going to be, I've got the whole world in my hand. Amen. And then right under that you can put decisions. Amen. Dear Lord, we thank you for this wonderful opportunity we have today, Lord, to come and share your spirit with each other, Lord. Lord, we pray that you speak to our hearts. Lord, we pray that, Lord, that you will uh, take away my awkwardness and replace it with boldness, Lord, that you will make straight all the thoughts that are in my heart. And, Lord, that those thoughts will only be pushed forward by you, Lord. Nothing from me but, Lord, just push through my spirit, Lord, what you want everyone to hear and what you want us to learn. Lord, you've been speaking and dealing with me, and I know, Lord, I know, Lord, that you're here, and I know that your will will be done, Lord, and we thank you so much for what you're going to do for us today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right, we're going to start first with what uh, I've preached before, and I've preached on ice cream and cake. We're going to start with a little ice cream and cake. We'll have dessert first, okay? Is that all right? Uh, uh, the Lord brought me a, he gave me kind of an illustration, you know, uh, the part of this is about decisions. You know, at one time we decided to follow the Lord. Right? Yeah. I hope all of you decided to follow the Lord. Uh, but when we did that, you know, the Bible says that our sins are cast as far as the east is from the west. That they're cast into the sea of forgetfulness. And he put on my heart an illustration for today. And today's illustration, we're going to use a cell phone. Anybody got a cell phone? Yeah. Everybody does <laughs> right? All right. Now, on my cell phone, it's got all these different settings. It, it's got memory. My cell phone actually kind of keeps track of the things that I do. Have you noticed that? Everything, every time I make a call, every time I receive a call, every time I miss a call, every time I send a text message, who I send it to, what number sent it to me, what's in there, you know, the message is there. Um, Every time I go on the I go on the internet and Google something, it shows right there. It's, all, it's got a history yeah. of all those things, and I can flip back through there and I can see who I called yesterday, or I can see who I called a month ago. If I go into a, what's it called? I wrote it down. <laughs> Well, it didn't take me long to find a bump in the road. <laughs> <laughs> settings. If I go to the settings in there, it has a place in the settings on my phone where I can go to my phone calls and I can clear the history. It has a place in all my text messages where I can go in there and I can clear the history. It has a place on my internet browser where I've been searching everything and it has a place where I can clear the history. Mm -hmm. So if we bring this illustration to the spiritual realm, mm -hmm. when I decided to follow Jesus, when I asked Him to be my Lord and Savior, mm -hmm. when I asked Him to forgive me for my sins, you know what happened? He reached out with His nail scar mm -hmm. and He pushed a button. Now you can't read this button anymore because this, this button is covered with blood. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But he pushed that button and it cleared my history. Oh, Amen. Yeah. It cleared my history of sin. The devil can come and he can accuse me. Uh, people that I know from the past, because I know there's people that I haven't seen in years, that if they see me, they're still going to think I'm that same person. They're still going to be knowing that history that I used to have. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter, though, because no matter how much the devil accuses me, it doesn't matter what technology he's got a hold of, because believe me, friend, if there's any technology out there, the devil's got his hand in it. Sure. It doesn't matter what technology he uses, he cannot bring back my history. Amen. 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 He can go to Jesus and he can say, hey, I, I know this Russell guy. You know, if you, if you check his history from yesterday, you check his history from yesterday, there's going to be sin there. It's a blank screen. Yeah. Right. So now the devil goes, no, I can't do that. I, can't. I know. I know I was there. I was there. I know. There, there's something there. Let's, let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back a couple of years. Let's go back a couple of years and let's check. Jesus. Blank screen. 
Well, well, you know that guy's been going to church a little bit. Maybe some of it's rubbed off on. Him. Let's go back. Let's go back. You know, I know he got saved about. Uh, let's see, about 1920. Let's go back about 30 years ago. Let's go back 30 years ago. Because I know. I know. I saw him every day. I was running with He was running with me, man. He was running with me. You know, we were everywhere together. You know, we did stuff together. We hung out. Let's go. Let's check it back then. Let's check it back then. Jesus is gone. To a blank screen. To a blank screen. Hallelujah. Mm. My sins are gone, my sins are gone, my sins are gone. There's nothing the devil can do to bring them back and show it to anybody. Amen. And so are yours. So are yours. Because I decided to follow Jesus. I decided to follow Jesus. So thank goodness. Thank God for that blank screen. That's, that's your ice cream and cake right there. That's your ice cream and cake. That's good stuff. That's good. We know. We know without a doubt that those sins are gone. Those sins are gone. Uh, if we'll go to 1 John chapter 1. It was in my Bible this morning. There it is. Today, we are where we are because of decisions that we made today and in the days before this. Amen. Wherever we're at, now y'all's going to have to stick with me because you have to. We have to accept some responsibility. Amen. Amen. We, have to, we have to accept this responsibility. Yeah. Today, we are where we're at because of decisions that we have made in the past. Mm -hmm. Right now, you're in church, but you make good decisions today. You make good right. decisions for the church. <laughs> Amen? Right. So we can make good, good decisions, right? Right. Right. right? But we are where we are in our situations at, at church, in our situations in our home life, in our situations at work, in our spiritual life. Right. We are where we are because of decisions that we have made. Amen. And it's only us that's made those. We've made those decisions that have put us in the position we're in. Right. Right. You know, um, we're real bad that we don't want to take responsibility for things that we've done. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. We want to say, okay, I, I got forced into this. You know, I, I just, I had to do it. Mm -hmm. I had to. I had to do it. I had to do it. I didn't have no choice. I had to do it. Well, if you had to do it, it was because you made decisions before that situation arose that put you in that situation. <laughs> Right? right? You know, if we're going to get down and we're going to get dig down to the nitty gritty, get down to the root of the problem, where we're at still came from that situation. If we ended up where we got ourselves back in a corner and we had to do something, it's because of decisions we made before. That's right. Amen. Amen. There's just no easy way to put it. There used to be a, I don't know if, how well y'all memory is, uh, there used to be, in the, in the 70s, they used to have these, I guess you would call them variety shows. They were shows that uh, mm -hmm. uh, they would have, like the Lucille Ball show or yeah. whatever. But they would have music and mm -hmm. uh, they would do skits and comedy routines and stuff like that. Well, there was one of those that, uh, I can't remember if he had his own show or if he was on a show, but this guy was called Flip Wilson. Yeah. <laughs> and he had his excuse. His, he had this church lady. It was one of his characters. And her excuse was, the devil made me do it. The devil made me do it. I'm sorry. The devil didn't make us do it. He didn't make me do it. He didn't make you do it. We decided to do it. Whatever it was, we decided. We have to accept responsibility for our actions and our situation. Okay, first, where was I? First John 1. It ran away again. I thought I was where I was supposed to be and I wasn't where I was supposed to be. Anybody get me? Now, I'm really there this time. First John 1. I'm going to read 5 through 10. It says, 
This then is the message we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us, cleanses us from all sin. Woo! Hallelujah! If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. I was uh, a gentleman I was speaking with and I didn't argue with him and I didn't uh, speak against him in any way. Um, but he had sons that were leading a different lifestyle, I guess you would say. If I want to be politically correct. Like Dave likes to be. Uh, but they were living a different lifestyle. They had a lifestyle choice. And he was speaking to me and he says, he says, you know, I know that he, he goes to church. He said, I know that that's sin. He said, but what's, what's the difference between his sin and my sin? He said, the Bible says there's no big sins, there's no little sins. He says, what's the difference between his sin and my sin? And I really didn't have an answer. I didn't, you know, I didn't have nothing scriptural to say, so I just, you know, we had our conversation in part ways. There was nothing. But this scripture right here, this answers that question. If you look at this, it says, if we say, there in verse 8, that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Yeah. Someone that makes a lifestyle choice to live a certain lifestyle, they're saying that they don't have any sin in them because that's their lifestyle and they choose to live it. They're saying that this is good. Mm -hmm. That it's not sinful because it, it's just a lifestyle. I choose to live this way. The devil's fooled somebody. Mm -hmm. The difference between their sin and my sin is verse 9. Amen. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. You cannot be cleansed from a sin if you don't confess the sin. You have to. The devil fools us every day. He fools me all the time. He messes with me all the time. He will get in my head and I will convince myself I will convince myself to do something that I know I shouldn't do. Now, is that not crazy? I will convince myself to do something that I know I shouldn't do. We're talking about that. How did I get into that situation? I want to get, I got another illustration. I uh, just, and then you see, I had somebody ask me just this week, ask me how long I've been saved, and I really don't know why they asked me, but and I don't know if it meant anything or not, but I said, well, I've been saved about 19 or 20 years. You know, it's been that long since I gave my life to the Lord, praise God. Mm -hmm. But just this, within the last six months, I made a bad decision, okay? I've got a, uh, my oldest son, he wanted to buy a car. My oldest son wanted to buy an expensive car. <laughs> And he didn't have, he's just 21, he didn't have the credit and the clout to go buy. So he came to me and, uh, <coughs> you know, being a good dad, he said, Dad, I can make the payments. I can make the I can make the payments. Son, that's a pretty steep payment. You're talking about a $30,000 car, son. Are you sure you can make that payment? <laughs> <laughs> all, all the time, the spirit's in me going, <coughs> <laughs> so, you know, a, a good Christian person is smart. They seek wise counsel from those around them and from God's Word. And so that's what I did, right? No. Because I knew. I knew in my spirit because.
because what my spirit was telling me that if we was already headed down the wrong road. And I knew that if I consulted my wise counsel, they would say, no. So I didn't consult wise counsel because I knew what their answer would do. And I knew what, I knew what their answer would be and I knew what I wanted to do. Did you hear that? I knew what I wanted to do. So, Instead of seeking wise counsel, like I said, I asked him, son, you sure you can afford this? Yeah, I can do it. Son, you know, had enough money to do nothing else. He says, well, Dad, if you, uh, uh, I've got a buddy of mine that did this. He says, if you'll, if you'll uh, tell the insurance that this is, this is your car and yours is driving, it'll make it a lot cheaper. Okay, does anybody see a red flag? <laughs> Anybody? Red flag number one. Let's, let's, let's just tell a little fib. Okay, let's just tell a little fib. It's not an out and out lie. Yeah, it is. It's an out and out lie. That's right. Come on. So, okay, I did this. Been, been saved for over 20 years. And still, I'm not grabbing the basic principles, the decisions. That I make every day. I decided to do it. Sign my name on the dotted line. <laughs> <laughs> well, things were fair. Uh, I got the car back about a month ago, two months ago. So now I have a car that uh, I have no people that I don't own and a payment that I sure don't own. And, uh, Everyone says, well, you really need to get on and get after, get after him. He didn't make that payment. Well, it's true. He, he couldn't hold up his end of the bar. But I knew. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I knew before it all started, I knew in my heart, from God's Spirit speaking to me, that he wouldn't be able to handle it. Yeah. Uh -huh. Just because, I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's, if, it's, if it's pride, if it's what it is, but wanting to give my son something that he wants. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I did. Mm -hmm. But I was wrong. And I put him in a place that he didn't want to be or need to be. Right. And I put me in a place too. So now, now I have to be responsible. I have to take So I have a car. If anybody wants to buy a <laughs> 2014 Mustang GT, get with me at the church and we'll talk some church. <laughs> You might want to buy one for your son, okay? <laughs> Think about it. <laughs> but this is decisions. Right? Decisions I make that seem, when you start off of it, just another decision that you made on another day or another hour. It's just another decision that you made. All our decisions. Help us to walk with God or they help us to walk away from yeah. God. Amen. Amen. Every single decision that we make. <clears throat> so there in my verse 8 there where it says if we have no if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, I convince myself that I was okay, that I could do what I was doing. As things got harder and things were harder for him to keep up and it was harder for me to support him. I should say us. But I realized hey, you know, this thing I did with this this insurance, this was wrong. Mm -hmm. That was I said, son, we gotta come clean about this. I said, um, so go on with it. The car's been wrecked twice. It's got two deep, nothing major, but two small deals. I said, son, you know why we're having so much trouble with this car? I said, we went about this the wrong way. We went into it the wrong way. We went into it with the wrong attitude. And we went into it all a lot. Yeah. I said, we've got to take that and we've got to fix it. I said, so we're going to go down and we're going to tell the insurance company, that, hey, this is your car and it's your driver and you're the driver. And I said, whatever we got to pay, that's what we got to pay for what you got to pay. I said, you must still pay me. <coughs> So we'll go down to the insurance company and we'll tell them, they say, well, you know, just by coincidence, we have new rules. Our insurance company that you can no longer uh, 
Let's see, how did it go? That everyone in the household had to be covered on the insurance. Mm -hmm. Because so many people have done this and lied to the insurance company. They got away with cheap, just cheaper rates. <clears throat> but anyway, just a small coincidence, I guess. But uh, So anyway, we got that out of the way. I made a bad decision a while back, even though I've been saved for 19 or 20 years. <clears throat> I still make bad decisions, but the thing is, I want to take responsibility for it. I want to take care of it. I want to do what I've got to do. We'll be really tight, but we're going to make it and we're going to get through it. Amen. <clears throat> because I figured out the source of the problem, and I've turned it over to God, and He's going to, he's going to come through for me. No doubt in my mind. I want to talk about how this guy named David decided to fall to God. We'll get you a better example. Okay? <laughs> we'll get you a better example. Uh, <clears throat> you all know the story of David. And uh, I want to start with the where he had the, his battle with Goliath. If we'll look in 1 Samuel, you don't have to look or you can look if you want to. In 1 Samuel 9 and 2, <clears throat> Israel was I'll give you a little background. Israel was looking for a king. They didn't need a king. They had no king. But they wanted a king. Okay. And God said, okay, I'll give you a king. In 1 Samuel 9 and 2 it says that he had a son whose name was Saul, a choice young man and goodly. And there was not among the children of Israel a goodlier person than he. In other words, he was the best looking boy in the world. <laughs> And not only that, but from his shoulders and upward, he was higher than any of the people. Not only was he the prettiest, but he was the biggest guy that they had. That's a king, right? Right? He was the prettiest, he was the tallest. Hey, that's, the, that's a king. So, uh, you know, Saul had a lot of experience. He was an experienced warrior. He fought many battles by the time they got to the point where they were ready to, where, where Goliath had challenged the armies of Israel. And I mean, if you're like me, you know, you think, you know, if they're going to send out their biggest guy, we're going to send out our biggest guy. Who was our biggest guy? We didn't send out our biggest guy. He was, he was still in his tent. Still in his tent. And they were, they were quaking and waiting. And David... Somewhere in his life, he decided to follow God. Right. Because when David, when David uh, brought, we know that he had already been anointed, and we don't know why. Nobody knew why he was anointed because he was the youngest. He was the little David. Dave says David was a chubby little guy. <laughs> That's just to quote David. So we got this chubby little guy. Nobody. Uh, he comes and he's just bringing food. All he do, he's bringing food to his brothers. They're out there for warfare. They're all sitting there trying to figure out what they're going to do about this big giant. And David looks at all of them. Why are you guys just sitting around? Because we've got a man over there that's calling out the armies of God. We're the army of God. Why aren't we going out to fight with this dude? Oh, he's too big. So David, somehow, he gets over there and he's talking to Saul. He says, Saul, I'm going to fight well, how can you fight? David said, well, but I decided to follow God. I decided to follow God, and I was able to protect the sheep from the lion. I was able to protect them from the bear because I decided to follow God. God is with me. I can go to battle. God will do this battle for me. Amen. I have complete faith and trust in God because I decided to follow Him. Amen. And Saul, I guess because he didn't know what else to do, he says, okay, you take my armor and go. Okay, we already started off and we established that Saul was a head and shoulders taller than anybody else. And then we uh, came back and we figured out that David was a little short chubby guy. <laughs> so, so Saul is going to hand him this armor that's this tall. <laughs> it don't make any sense sometimes. It just doesn't make any sense. David decided he didn't need that armor. He, David knew what he needed. 
Amen. He didn't decide to rely on what Saul was going to provide him. He didn't decide to allow Saul to equip, equip him to go into battle. He decided to rely on God. Amen. David was victorious. Amen. 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 He made a lot of other good decisions. You know, every time he went into battle, he looked to the Lord first. That's right. Every time he decided to follow God every time. He was victorious in his battles every time. When Saul got upset with him, and Saul was Saul was just hunting him down like a dog, he was going to kill him. Right. Saul was going to kill him. David decided on God. Amen. There was twice that it's recorded there in the Bible that David was in the same camp right beside Saul. He just took him a little marking note. Dave was here. Right. <laughs> he didn't lay a hand on God's anointing because right. he decided to follow God. Right. And God blessed him for it. There was a time when they brought the Ark of the Covenant. They were able to bring it home. And David danced before the Lord. That's right. mm -hmm. And his wife made fun of him, but he decided to follow God. Mm -hmm. And then there was the time when David saw Bathsheba and <laughs> Oops. That's what it says right there. Oops. <laughs> David made it. Right. The devil is recorded right here in God's Word. He is here to steal and to kill and to destroy. He is going to be looking at us everywhere he can, trying to find a weak spot, trying to make us to get us to make a wrong decision. He was able to get David to make a wrong decision. It seems like, you know, when we, when we talk about the Bible, it seems like for some, for some crazy reason that we kind of put it off in, in, a, in a separate spiritual realm. Like it's not something that we can really relate to. Like it's not something that really happened mm -hmm. right here on this earth. Yeah, right. But that's not what it was. The Bible's not a fairy tale. It's, right. it's a real recording of what happened to real men and real women. Amen. Amen. It's a book. If you want to look at it this way, it's a book of their decisions. Their decisions every day, every day, and and these people didn't know that they were making uh, monumental decisions. They didn't uh, come up into this situation and go, "Okay, I really need to think about this. I really need to make the right decision because this is going to be recorded in God's Word, and people are going to be reading this forever." That's not what they were thinking. They were living everyday lives just like you and me. Amen. Every Amen. single day. This was just another day at work. Right. You know, that's what David's job was. He was the king. He was a warrior. Mm -hmm. That was his job, just another day at work. He made this decision at work today. He made another decision. He made another decision. We've got to realize that these decisions are relevant to our walk with God. David's bad decision cost him an opportunity to build God's temple. Mm -hmm. yeah. David got lined out, though. He got lined out. God mm -hmm. spoke to him. David saw his sins. Mm -hmm. He asked for forgiveness of his sins. God forgave him of those mm -hmm. sins. And David went on because he went on and he gathered stuff to build that temple. Mm -hmm. And he forged relationships that would make it easier for Solomon to build that temple. Right. Mm -hmm. He didn't hold the grudge. David realized he took responsibility. He understood that what he did was sin and that it was wrong. And it was because of his decisions. It wasn't somebody else's fault. It wasn't Bathsheba's right. fault for being so pretty. <laughs> it wasn't the architect's fault that built his castle so he could look out his window and he just happened to look in her her bathroom or whatever you want to call it back then. <laughs> it was his fault. It was his decision. Right. He accepted it. Amen. He understood 
that he'd made a mistake and that he had asked God and that God would forgive him and that he could move forward. Let's see, where are we at now? <laughs> oh, we were talking about those decisions. <clears throat> Don't want to go there yet. I need to go to Romans. This is one of my, my decisions. One of my, uh, I think it's a, uh, it's just where I go and I really need to get myself focused. Romans chapter 8. Oh you're going to know where I'm going before I get there. <laughs> Romans chapter 8. Starting at verse 35. Now we talk about these decisions and, and how we get into a spot where we got to do something, where we have to do something. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, all these things, we are more than conquerors Hallelujah. through him that loved us. Amen. For I am persuaded, I have decided Amen. that neither <laughs> death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come neither nor height nor depth nor any other creature, including the devil, shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. You can stand right there, folks, if you can't stand nowhere else. Amen. You can stand there. So see, these situations that we get into that we say, Oh, I can't do nothing about it. Oh, you know, this is happening. And this is causing it. And this is happening. And, and he's causing it. And this is happening. And she's causing it. We've got the power. This right here, just these few short verses, tells me that I've got the power. And I've got the authority. That you've got the power. And you've got the authority to make the right decision. Every time. Yeah. Every time. God gives us opportunities every day. We have to see those opportunities. And every time we have that opportunity, every opportunity that presents itself, we can decide to follow Jesus. Now, be careful. The devil will also give an opportunity every day. He's got sin in disguise. We have to be very careful. We have to see it for what it is. It's, it's, it's so important. This right here. Mm -hmm. This right here. This book, this record of decisions that all these men and women made. We've got to know it. Amen. Because just like Satan comes through here and tried to trick and deceive each and every one of these people. It's going to come and try to trick and deceive each one of us. Right. And if we don't know this word, if we're not in this word, he's going to trick us. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I made a bad decision last year. You know what? I was going to church every Sunday. Well, I was going to church every Sunday morning, every, or every Sunday morning, every Sunday night. I was teaching the. Uh, I was teaching Sunday school. I lead service there every Sunday morning and every Sunday evening. I have to lead the singing. You'd think a guy that was doing all those things, he would be able to see the devil coming at him. <laughs> and he would be able to make the right decision. But like I said, 
I convinced myself that this was something that I should do and something that I wanted to do. I was deceived by the devil. It's not his fault that I did it, though. It was my decision. The devil's been doing this for a long time. Don't take it for granted. Look mm -hmm. for him to be sneaking up on you in every corner. He's going to come up, come at you with deceit. He's not going to come up and grab you by your shirt collars and say, Denounce the name of Christ and follow me. He's not going to do that. He knows it's not going to work. Right. He knows you're going to resist. He knows you're going to say, Get behind me, devil! <laughs> He's going to sneak up on you. Watch for him. Listen to that spirit. If, you're not, if we don't have that close relationship with God, if we're not in His Word, if we're not with Him in prayer, if we don't have that relationship, we're not going to have that spirit to speak to us and say, oh, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. Look, listen, think. Dave Garner, 101. God good, devil bad. <laughs> Come on. Think just, just a second. And like I said, many of these decisions that we're making every day, they may seem insignificant. They may seem small. They may seem like they're going, not going to amount to anything. But those decisions... They affect the next decision. They affect the next mm -hmm. situation. So if we decide to follow God in every decision that we make, all the decisions that come later will be easier instead of harder. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's when you have all that, that confusion and uh, strife going on that it makes it hard to make a decision. Mm -hmm. Our eyes are closed. There's in the... One more scripture here. No, actually not. In James chapter 3, I'm going to read verse 13 through 18. It says, Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge of money? Let him shew out of good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. But if you have better envy and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom, this is still wisdom, this wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. Amen. But, verse 17, but the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of the righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. Yeah. <coughs> it makes sense. It feels right. We've got to be close to God. I kind of thought, as I was, as the Lord was giving this to me, that this is this is basic instructions. This is very basic decisions, everyday decision, every decision we decide whether we're going to walk with God or whether we're going to walk away from God. Every decision, don't take your decision for granted. Every decision, very basic, very simple. Y'all remember when I started off that I said this was called I Got the Whole World in My Hand? Mm -hmm. Matthew chapter 4. <laughs> then Jesus was led up of the Spirit into the wilderness. Then Jesus was led up of the Spirit into the wilderness 
to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was, he was afterward in hunger. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. You know the word, you can make your decision with the word, it's the right decision. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city, and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple, and saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written. How many knows that when the devil's going to come after you, and he faces his biggest adversary, he's not going to use his smallest weapon. Amen. His greatest weapon, I truly believe, this is not there in the scripture, I don't think. I truly believe that the devil's greatest weapon is deceit through God's word. That's what he's going to use. If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee in their hands, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against the stone. Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again, the devil taketh him into an exceeding high mountain, and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of and saith unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. The devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. He made his good decisions that were not in the Word of God. Remember our cell phone that we had at the beginning? Do you ever think that you could hold in your hand, carry in your pocket all the information that's in this world? Google it, yeah, I can do it. I can talk to anybody, I can see anything, I can see things that I don't need to see. I can read things that I don't need to read. I've got the whole world right here in my hand. I have access. Each one of you has access, each one of your kids has access. Be careful. Don't let the devil tempt you. You're thinking you've got the whole world in And we're going to end it all. And we're going to say that we have decided to follow Jesus. There's a song that says, It says, I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. Oh, uh -huh.